بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace be upon you all welcome good evening good afternoon good morning from all over the world nice to meet you again in our Arab English Teachers Association AETA and I am Shawkia Hawaura from Palestine the president of this association I welcome you all and welcome Dr. Mohammed Safdar Bhiti from Pakistan and thanks uh, thanks a lot for him for accepting our invitation to join us in this 16, in the 16th session in this association and this uh, webinar is titled as the impact of sounds for learning second language and I hope you will enjoy this session, inshallah. And I will let Ms. Dr. Muhammad to introduce him for himself for us. Please, Dr. Muhammad, go ahead. Welcome another time and welcome all the attendees from all over the world. Please introduce yourself to our guests. Okay, ma'am. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and uh... Welcome all of you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the president of this session and the association, uh, Ms. Shokia, for providing me this chance to interact with such a nice uh, audience once again. And the topic of my talk is, ma'am, would you like to make me the co-host so that I may share my uh, yes i screen. will yes i made you a presenter i made okay. you presenter yes you can share now okay okay ma'am just a minute i'm going to share it yes we we saw your powerpoint mm -hmm, yes. Is my screen visible? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay, yes. Okay. Again, Just feeling the same problem. Your, your face on the screen. Open the PowerPoint first, then you can begin sharing. I have opened already. Yes, yes. At first we saw it, but now it is uh, not visible. Just a minute, ma'am. I'm just trying. Yes, no problem. Now, can you see my presentation now? Is it visible? Not yet. It seems that it is uh, loading. Yes, okay. now it is visible. Now it is visible. Okay, G, okay. G. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, I am Dr. Muhammad Sardar Bhatti from the Islamic University of Bahawalpur, Pakistan. And the topic of my talk is the impact of sounds for learning second language. Before going into depth of my talk, I would like to uh, mention the quote of a well-known linguist and educationist, A.G. Jimson, who once said, if we want to get, have, 
mastery over any uh, language, we should have 100% command over its phonetics, sounds, or pronunciation, 90% over its grammar, and 10% over its vocabulary. So that is the basically uh, uh, under this umbrella, I would like to discuss these focal points, phonetics and phonology, place and manner of articulation, syllables and intonation patterns. Respected audience, phonological awareness of sounds in the second language cannot be presumed in second language learners. The learners must know the linguistically significant phonemes and allophones in the second language to read, write, and to speak fluently to avoid miscommunication. Phonetics provide a valuable way of opening our ears to facets of language that we need to understand by reference to their written rather than their actual spoken forms. Phonology concerns itself with the ways in which languages make use of sounds to distinguish, uh, to distinguish words from each other. The knowledge of phonetics and phonology makes English language learners to have a command over the sounds of English speech. It is a common knowledge too uh, that there are English language speakers who have developed their native accents and have not visited countries where English is the first language. Teaching art phonology. Basically, pronunciation is the most neglected yes, aspect. Sorry for interruption, Dr. Mohammed. Are you moving the slides or just yes. you are talking? No. Uh, no, I, no, I am moving. They are I not am, moving. But I am moving, ma'am. And no, not yet. You can stop sharing and then you can restart sharing. Okay, can you yes, see now? Yes, now teaching phonology. Yes, introduction. Yes. Okay, yes, okay, okay. okay. Actually, pronunciation is the most neglected aspect of English uh, language teaching. Teachers' knowledge and understanding of English phonology is very important. As phonology refers to the sound system of a language, it gives the teacher awareness about the sound system of English. It helps him to be better informed linguistically to prove uh, himself a good model for his students. Impact of sounds. By learning the basics of pronunciation uh, through uh, phonics, the learners will not only learn to speak comfortably, but also will improve their listening comprehension. At the same time, Pronunciation is important to improve reading ability. When we read, we say the words out loud in our minds. That's why phonemic, uh, phonemic awareness is important because it requires readers to notice how letters represent sounds. It uh, uh, premises readers for print and it gives readers a way to approach sounding out and reading new words. It helps readers understand the alphabetic principle uh, that the letters in words are systematically represented by sounds. It is the sounds of a language that are used in communication, particularly the human linguistic communication. Phonology is relevant in communication studies because if sounds of a language are not adequately learned or articulated, communication will not be adequate or effective. By learning both phonetics and phonology, the students may acquire a full comprehension of the function of English speech sounds. It also helps the learners to have a uh, segmental and some supra-segmental awareness. Phonetics is the scientific study of speech sounds in general. It tells us about the production, transmission, and reception of speech sound. Knowledge of phonetics is very necessary for English teacher. It studies the medium of spoken language by telling how sounds are articulated through vocal organs and how they are transmitted uh, through the speaker's ear through air, how they are perceived by listener's ear and envisaged by his brain. These are the branches of phonetics, articulatory phonetics, acoustic phonetics, auditory phonetics, and instrumental phonetics. In articulatory phonetics, it is the uh, study of the way in which speech sounds are made by the vocal organs. 
while in acoustic uh, phonetics studies the physical properties of speech sounds as transmitted between mouth and ear while auditory phonetics studies the per perceptual response to speech sounds as mediated by ear auditory nerve and brain in instrumental phonetics, it is used for the study of using physical apparatus. Phonology. Phonetics is like a country and phonology is like a city. It is the study of arrangement of sounds. It is also the sound study of sounds of particular language. These are the branches of phonology. Segmental phonology, supersegmental phonology, diachronic phonology, and synchronic phonology. In segmental phonology, it analyzes the speech into discrete segments, such as phonemes and allophones. While in this branch of phonology, the phonologist is interested in the speech sounds. While in supersegmental phonology, uh, the, uh, the phonologist is interested in those features of human speech sounds, which extend over more than one segment, such as stress, pitch, rhythm, and intonation patterns. Diachronic phonology. In this branch of phonology, the phonologist studies the patterns of sound change in the history of language. While in synchronic phonology, in this branch, phonologist studies sound patterns regardless of the process of historical change. Consonant sounds. Our speech sounds are classified into consonant and vowel sounds. These are sounds which are produced with some obstruction in the mouth, and there are 24 consonant sounds in English. If we talk about the description of consonant sounds, the consonant sounds can be discussed under four headings, place of articulation, manner of articulation, voicing of the sounds, weak or strong sounds. Now I'd like to move towards the place of articulation. Here we look at the exact place where the obstruction occurs. In terms of place of articulation, we get following categories. Bilabial sounds, labiodental sounds, dental sounds, alveolar sounds, palatovalvular sounds, palatal sounds, velar sounds, glottal sounds, and retroflex sounds. In the manner of articulation, there, there comes plosives, fricatives, nasals, affricates, lateral, and semi -vowels. There are six plosives. Bilabial plosives are fa, ba. The air passage is closed by two lips. While the velar plosives are ka, ga. The air passage is closed by pressing the back of the tongue. And velar plosives are ta, ta. The air passage is closed by raising the tip of the tongue to touch the teeth. Fricatives. There are nine fricatives. Labiodental fricatives. Fa, va. The lower tip is placed against the upper teeth. Dental fricatives. Ta. The tip of the tongue touches the upper teeth. Alveolar fricatives. Sa, za. The blade of the tongue is brought near the teeth. Plato alveol. Ja. Blade of tongue is raised towards hard pellet and glottal fricatives. Ha. The glottis is open. There are nasals. These are uttered through nasal intonation. Bilabial nasals is M, man. Alveolar nasal is na, n, near. Velar nasal is ing, sing. Africans. Palato alveolar, cha, ja, like chin and jam. Lateral alveolar, la, leg, law. Semi walls, wa, ja, wet, jess. Phonemes, what the phoneme is? A phoneme is the smallest unit of a sound. Uh, in English language, there are 24 consonant sounds. 14 vowel sounds, 8 diphthong sounds, and 5 tristong sounds. There are two kinds of phonemes, voiced phonemes and voiceless phonemes. These nine consonants are the voiceless phonemes, 
pa, ta, ka, pa, cha, sa, sha, cha, ha. And the white streams, all the walls are white streams and all the rest of the 15 consonants are white. And they, there were nine voiceless consonants, which I have already mentioned. Allophones. A phone is like the head of the family, while allophones are like the members of the family. Allophones are different sounds of the same phoneme produced in different words. Pa, ta, ta, ka, and ga. Slabel. It is a sound unit, often longer than one sound phoneme and smaller than a word. The number of syllables in a word depends upon the number of vowel sounds in it. Vowels can form a syllable of their own, whereas consonant cannot form a syllable of their own. There are four kinds of syllables, monosyllabic words, just one, bisyllabic, two words, trisyllabic, three words, polysyllabic words, more than three. The stress pattern of English, extra force with which we with which a syllable in a word is spoken. In English, word stress helps the listener to recognize words. Weak syllables are not stressed. Content words are stressed. Structural words are not stressed. Basically, English is a stress-timed language. Intonation patterns. Wrong use of intonation impairs meaningful communication. The aim of intonation is to make communication effective and meaningful. While speaking, we generally raise and lower the pitch of our voice. In fact, intonation depicts sentence stress. There are three intonation patterns in English phonology. Rising intonation, falling intonation, and the middle pitch. Rising intonation. The yes, no questions beginning with auxiliary verbs, the come under rising intonation. Statements intended to be questions and the conditional sentences and a request, polite command and polite WH questions, they come under rising intonation. While the following intonation, interjections, invitations, strong commands, simple statements and WH questions. Middle pitch. Intonation is kept at the at a middle pitch to utter pauses in a sentence. Like I reached college, attended my classes, returned at 4 p.m. They reached here at 9 a.m. Uh, did all their official duties, came back to the center at 5 p.m. So thanks for your patience. And any question, please. Yes, please. That's all from my side, ma'am. Sorry? Sorry? Yes. That's what? all from my side. Can you repeat, please? I was saying that's all from my side. That is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Yes, if there is any question, you can raise your hand, please. And I will open the mics for you. If there is any question, please raise your hand. Yes, I will open the mics. Yes, first of all, Miss Nuha, please go ahead with your question. Miss Nuha. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Yeah. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome. Um, thank you. Um, I have um, one question. 
uh, for new words or in new words while reading them, I have some confusion um, in how to make how to divide these words in uh, syllables. Uh, I didn't hear them before, and uh, not all words uh, I can uh, in a strictly way, Yani. Um, yeah, uh, do all our uh, rules how to divide these words into uh, open syllables, closed syllables uh, to make its pronunciation uh, right and um, very good. Yani. How can I um, uh, yani handle this problem? Or how can I deal with this problem? OK, ma'am, thank you very much for your very nice question. Actually, I would like to say one thing. The first, the teacher must have good command over uh, his language and the communication skill, and he should be a role model in front of his student. If he knows better uh, the pronunciation, the transcription, uh, and now it is very easy for the teachers. They have the, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, digital uh, dictionaries where you can write the question. It, you can find its correct pronunciation. You have to pronounce in front of students. Automatically, they will copy you. And that is the easiest way uh, for the beginners and for the teachers. When you make it your routine and your students' routine, it, they will become the habitual of that. You can also request and ask your students to use the digital dictionaries, which is a talking dictionary, like the Oxford and the Longman dictionaries. They can uh, download those dictionaries in their uh, gadgets, in their laptop or in their mobiles and whatever wherever they found find any uh, different uh, or the difficult word to pronounce they should put in that and automatically they will be going to tell them the exact pronunciation of that and that is the easy way ma'am thank you thank you you're welcome yes thank you miss nuha for your question now let's go for Miss Wafa. Welcome, Miss Wafa. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Salam alaikum lal jami. Salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome. Kifik, Miss Shalkiya. Alhamdulillah. Kifik, inshallah, bkhir. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Shalkiya, for this uh, and, and Mr. Um, uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. Yeah, uh, for this. Uh, uh, fruitful and uh, useful uh, session for uh, about the pronunciation and the sounds of English uh, for the teachers. Uh, just I'd like to add something for semi vowels. I think that we can say W and H. This is for semi vowel as saying uh, H for hour for we say an hour. For example, so this is, I think, a semi uh, semi vowel sound, and um, also for for intonation. If we we'd like to use uh, an in practice intonation, I think it depends on the situation and the context itself. Uh, for example, if we like to question or request or exclaim or or uh, speak in an uh, ordinary speech. Um, I think it's very important for the teacher before going to his classroom to listen for the uh, for the new words, especially for the sometimes we have difficult words in a pronunciation. Sometimes we have uh, silent uh, letters or si silent sounds. So the teacher should practice before uh, entering his classroom. So thank you very much for this topic. I think it's a sensitive topic for the teacher and for everyone who speaks English uh, in, in, in the words, in, uh, all over the words. Thank you very much for choosing this sensitive topic. Thank you very much, Mr. Shawqiya and Mr. Muhammad. Thank you. So nice of you, ma'am, oh. for your very nice Thank compliments. Uh, actually, I, as I was earlier uh, saying, that the teacher must be a role model of pronunciation in front of students. In my last uh, webinar, I told you one thing. If you don't plan, your students will plan for you. So before the class, the teacher should have good lesson planning 
he should have excellent preparation then he should plunge into the class and he should not waste or do the stuffing of his students rather he should try to impart maximum knowledge into their minds which will be uh, over there for the long life thank you yes thank you dr mohammed thank you Ms. Fat. now let's come to miss hana abbas welcome miss hana hi how are you miss hana unmute yourself please yes yes assalamu alaikum hi how are you fine thank you how are you yes. dr shaw i i wish everything is okay Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Your question, Dr. Mohammed. Yes, thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for this uh, nice presentation. Uh, my question concerning the smallest part of uh, of sound of of the yeah, of uh, sound. Can we invent uh, an an yeah, phoneme is the smallest part of language? Can we yes. make uh, another invention concerning the smallest parts of a language? Yeah. A part of a phoneme, like schwa. I, I, I couldn't uh, imagine that schwa is uh, a, a sound. It's a part of a sound. Do you agree with me that we can make this invention? Yes, ma'am. Actually, schwa is a choice also a sound we have to recognize its impact and the second important uh, uh, second thing is that we are learning english as a second language so we have to accept the received pronunciation we can never be a native speakers but we can be near to them so the received pronunciation is the best way and we have to teach uh, the british accent to our students which is very lively, which is very loving, which is very, its sound is very nice. So you have to uh, first, uh, um, I think, practice yourself, uh, some sort of the listening, like IELTS book and uh, the pronunciation books, you have to listen first, and then you will have to teach to your student. And first, if the teacher himself is updated, upgraded, and he is having first hand knowledge about his subject, then he can give the sound knowledge to his students. So again and again, I am requesting all of you because you all are respectable teachers. You have to polish your students, but you have to polish yourself. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, nice answer. But I think uh, English is concerned with every society has his uh, accent of English. Indian English is different from uh, Egyptian English, is different from American English, British English. So every society has his uh, own uh, model of English. Uh, so we, may we have uh, a smallest part in language uh, rather than a phoneme. A part of a phoneme may be in the future. Thank you for answering my question. You are welcome, ma'am. Actually, uh... We should not reflect our mother tongue, L1, in our pronunciation. While communicating English, we should not reflect what language we are having, what language we are using at our home. If there is no L1 touch in your second language, that will be near to the native speakers. And in my point of view, because in Pakistan, I am going to teach to the IELTS students, I am going to give this uh, British accent, which is the best one in my point of view. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hane. Now let's come to Mr. Zafar. Yes, please. Welcome. Go ahead with your question, please, and unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome. Uh, uh, so nice of you, uh, Dr. Mohammed uh, Savda Saab. Uh, nice to uh, meet you here. Uh, at the same time, uh, not I am a teacher, but at uh, the same time, I am a, a PhD scholar in Kafir Rahim Yarpan. So, Good. Mostly, mostly, sir, you have given my answer and ma'am Shokia. Uh, 
but here i would like to ask your opinion sir uh, especially in uh, globe sir you are watching that there are different types of uh, speaking uh, pronunciation styles like uh, american like british like uh, canadian or uh, like australian uh, so all things are uh, very essential and uh, very uh, constructive for all the uh, learners uh, as a second language sir so uh, what is your opinion sir uh, can these uh, speaking styles influence uh, on learning sir uh, our learner sir which is best sir uh, as ma'am told that uh, uh, as a uh, as pakistani as a uh, arab and uh, many other styles uh, as japanese as you have uh, listened sir so they have all their own style of speaking sir and uh, 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 teaching so which one is best sir how uh, which which we can follow sir thank hmm. you sir thank, thank you very much mr zafar for your very 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 nice question you are from my country and you are from rehinger khajapri university so happy to know that someone is uh, from there who is attending this webinar my dear basically there are two acceptable accents one is the british and the second is the american these are the acceptable but i am myself is focusing on the uh, british accent because i am working as the ielts trainer uh, so for the ielts you know it is conducted by the british council which comes under uk so i have to follow it and that is comparatively accent this uh, british accent is the best one and uh, while in pakistan and in other countries because we have to learn english as a second language there are different types of accent there will be the punjabi accent while communicating in english that's why i was saying there should not be your l1 or the mother tongue uh, reflection in your second language because english is going to be taught and learned in pakistan or all over the world except uh, european countries that is going to be learned at a second language so if the teacher himself is not going to focus on the uh, uh, l1 or the mother tongue automatically the students will not be reflecting that language so it is my humble request to all of you that you should accept and the follow british accent thank you very much thank you so nice of you dr sir thank you welcome yes thank you mr zafar now let's come to miss asia welcome miss asia unmute yourself miss asia Asya Sultana, unmute yourself, please, and go ahead with your question. Yes, Miss Asya, can you hear me? Miss Asya? Yes. If there is any question, you can unmute yourself and ask Dr. Muhammad. Yes, it seems that she has a problem with her mic. Dr. Muhammad, you can continue. OK, ma'am. Anyone else? It seems that she has a problem. You can continue. OK, okay ma'am, that's OK. Uh, again and again, I am very happy that there are a number of participants who are attending this webinar. And I think myself lucky enough that you are giving me uh, this chance to interact with such a nice uh, uh, galaxy of icons and the scholars who are over here. So basically, I'm not going to deliver any lecture. Basically, that is the exchange of my ideas with you people because you all are highly qualified. You all are having different uh, uh, region and the origins you are uh, uh, I think uh, belonging to different countries definitely different cultures are there so it is really a very nice to meet such a bouquet the Thank flowers you. of different kinds yes yes there is a question uh, Mr. Shahid please yes yes go ahead please 
Now the floor is yours, Mr. Shahid. You can go ahead with hello, your question. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. I am very impressed uh, your uh, great uh, presentation, especially Dr. Muhammad Sadar Saab. May Allah Almighty grant grant you more success in uh, his life. Thank you very much, dear, for your very nice uh, prayers for me and your good compliments. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Goodbye. Thank you and welcome. Now uh, there is a number I cannot read it. A E O. Please, you can rename yourself. Mohammed Kashif, maybe. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yes Mohammed yes. Kashif Rasul from Pakistan. Yes, welcome. All, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir and madam, for very wonderful presentation. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Safdar Saab, just you mentioned that the British accent is a very good, good one and comparatively is best one. So uh, when we were learning the English, uh, our teachers used to advise us uh, to listen BBC, BBC News, or uh, to learn how the British pronounce the words. Uh, but we, uh, especially me, find very difficulty in uh, understanding their pronunciation. How could we advise any simpler method or just we should follow listening BBC or similar content? Please guide us, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kashi, for your very nice question. Actually, the more you listen, the more you speak. If you are having good listening, if you become a very good listener, your ear training is necessary. That is very compulsory because for speaking and uh, for communication, the spoken is going to be caught while written is going to be taught. Whatever you listen, you try to follow it. You try to copy it. So the BBC is definitely done by this British accent. So you have to follow. You have to follow the accent. And I think in my point of view, you should watch some uh, English movies and English programs. In this way, you can improve your pronunciation and the communication as well. In one thing you should remember, if your listening is good, then automatically you can become a good speaker. First become listener, then uh, become a good speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are some questions in the chat box. Let's read some of them. Yes, uh, Mr. Amir says he needs this PowerPoint, please. And also they congratulate you for uh, your amazing presentation. And it is very knowledgeable and very amazing. Okay, now, I'm Mr. Here. Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed Abdel Al uh, is asking how to teach pronunciation in different stages, secondary, preparatory, and the primary. How to teach pronunciation in different stages? Okay, ma'am. Actually, the thing is that first the teacher should, uh, especially if I talk about myself in the very first lecture of my class, I tell them about the alphabet. I ask them that there are 26 alphabet. While then I switch them towards there are 26 alphabet and 26 letters in the alphabet. Okay. And while it is having 51 uh, sounds, so the consonant sounds are easier, they are representing very easily, but the vowel sounds are going to be, uh, uh, represent themselves with difficulty. So, I for the beginners, you should teach them bit by bit the consonant sounds and for the other students you should tell them about the vowel sounds because they are different and difficult as well post uh, basically the teacher should make his lesson plan very uh, li lively and very easy and very friendly the students may learn it when the students come to me their pronunciation is zero but within two weeks they become uh, i think uh, near to the british accent so it is my work, it depends on the teacher, how well he is going to handle his student, how well he is going to impart the first hand knowledge onto his students. Thank you. 
Thank you. Then another question we will see. Yes, Mr. Al Hassan says great presentation. It represents a high level about sound in English. This topic is based on linguistic linguistic studies and the different gates opened in this field. The first step in phonetics and then phonology. The intonation is related to the person or teacher and how to express their or his ideas. Thank you, Mr. Al Hassan, for your comment. Good thing, blend yourself. Yes, then. Uh, Miss Fathia says, MashaAllah, the most gracious, the most merciful, a wonderful and distinguished explanation. Bless your efforts, may God Almighty bless you all. Thank you, Miss, uh, Miss Fathia. And Mr. Muhammad Kashir says, sure, Indian accent is very familiar in the subcontinent. Similarly, Australian accent is very fluent without a general and essential poses. Yes, can you comment on his uh, opinion, Victor? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, surely. Actually, Indian accent is good one. Basically, the English is the... Uh, but the Britishers are the custodian of this language. Indians have also received the pronunciation, the RP. And in Pakistan, we are also following the RP received pronunciation. Then we have to follow it because Pakistani and all the Asian countries, especially the India, here the Urdu is going to be learned and spoken. Uh, so English is going to be learned. Uh, definitely, we have to follow some accent. There are some Pakistanis who are having very good accent. There are many Indians who have very good accents. It depends on the person, how well he perceives and speaks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Very yes. Good. Yes, they, uh, they thank you for this presentation. And also many asked for this PowerPoint presentation. If you can, uh, oh, can okay. we have? Yes. Okay, yes, thank I'll you. share. I'll share. Yes. Yes, Ms. Fakia says it is our honor to be with you, Dr. Muhammad. Thanks a lot. Uh, Dr. Mutia, thanks. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Shawkia. Thank you, Dr. Mutia. Welcome. Uh, yes, and many others the same. They thank you for this presentation. Uh, dear attendees, I sent you two phones. The first as feedback for the presentation, and the second now I send it for certification. Please fill your email and your name, and the certificate will be on your email that you wrote in the form. Automatically, you will receive your certificate. Thank you all and welcome. If there is any other question, you can raise your hand and ask Dr. Muhammad before we leave. Uh, Mr. Mubarak, Hello? go ahead. Welcome, Mr. Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum to all. I am Mubarak Ali from India. Alaikum uh, salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Welcome, Mr. Mubarak. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, thanks for a uh, very insightful in, and inspiring presentation, sir. And extending my sincere thanks to organizer for this opportunity. Uh, as per the instructor, sir, I, I like the quote, sir. If you plan, if you not plan for the student, they plan for us. Is that exact word, sir? Can applicable to the management term also. Thanks sir, for that quote. Uh, my question is, I think uh, you are saying uh, British accent is better than American accent. How? Okay. This is my first question. My second question, speaking English is which one is important? Accent, grammar or vocabulary? Thanks a lot and thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. As I had quoted first the well-known quotation of a well-known educational A.G. Jinson. He said, if you want to get mastery over any language, you should have 100% command over its accent or the pronunciation, 90% over its grammar and the 10% over its vocabulary, right? So as because uh, there are two ways of learning any language. First way is the acquisition. We, uh, in which society we live, we acquire the, the language which is going to be spoken over there. Like we are Pakistani, you are Indian in our country, in our motherland. 
Urdu is going to be learned. Urdu is going, going, going to be spoken over there. So we are going to acquire that language. But for learning second language, especially English has become an international language and it is the need of the hour. We have to learn it. For learning it, we have to get the first most important thing is get the uh, help of this grammar. On the basis of grammar, our students are going to learn some different uh, types of structure and they know how to use the language. When they get, because we have to focus on two things, their communication, how? Uh, accuracy and fluency. First, we have to make them fluent and after we have to uh, focus on their accuracy. For that, we have to take care of their pronunciation. They should pronounce well. Actually, I personally like the British accent. That's why I was saying that it is very easy to learn. It is very easy to teach. It is very easy to receive and the perceive. So we people who are learning English as a second language, we uh, basically depend on the received pronunciation, RP. After that, we can come closer to the native speaker. But take care of yourself and your students. They should not reflect their mother tongue while speaking English. If I quote over here in Pakistan, I think the other person may not understand. If they are the uh, uh, Urdu speaking, they will say, I came from Kranchi. That is not Kranchi, that is Krachi, right? And likewise, other people will say, speak li like this. So L1 interference is the big hindrance in learning the pronunciation of second language, any language, especially English. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mubarak. Thank you a lot. Yes. If there is any other question, please, you can go ahead with it. Yes, Mr. Amir, I saw a question for you. If you want to raise it, you can go ahead. Mr. Amir, can you hear me? So it seems that there is no question. Thank I, I you. I hear you, but, uh, sorry. Yes. Yes, yes. Sorry. If, if you have Thank any you for other this, questions. Uh, session, it's uh, very nice and uh, I want to that we appreciate you great for and the doctor. Uh, here we uh, we see our students uh, jolly coding and uh, I think it's uh, wonderful to attract them to to learn the language easily, right? Uh, but uh, as, as you know, that uh, the English language uh, uh, in uh, our Arab countries uh, we are affected by their own mother tongue. How can we overcome this problem? Yes, you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Your question is, I think you were saying that how we can overcome our mother tongue while speaking English. Am I right? Is this your question? Yeah. Uh, how yani, can we solve this problem? The, the mother language, uh, sorry, the mother uh, uh, tongue affected our uh, expressions and the language, the teaching, the language, uh, uh, as English language, the second language, yeah, I mean. Yes, sir. I have noticed because I have some interaction with the uh, Saudi Arabians and the, I am giving, this is my third or the fourth, uh, uh, I think, presentation with you people. So I have seen your accent is going to reflect your uh, L1. The reason is that you should try to practice it again and again. You should focus on this language. You have to overcome it by yourself. It depends on you how you overcome over there. Practice makes the man perfect. If you are going to make the practice of that, you are going to whatever, as I was saying that there are some digital dictionaries, you should write down the sentences or the paragraphs over there, how they are going to pronounce. You should try to pronounce it in the same way. Bit by bit, with the passage of time, you will come over your this, uh, deficiency your expressions 
and your pronunciation will also be like the native speaker. Mm -hmm. I can bet. Thank you, sir. Yes. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amir. Now, Ms. S. Yes, says the majority of Arab learners. Uh, sorry. The majority of Arab learners have common pronunciation issues such as a J and G sound. Could you suggest mm -hmm. any ways in which this issue can be dealt with? Ma'am, ma I can give you one thing. I have some uh, practice material because I hold some training sessions in Pakistan. So I have some practice material with me. I teach them the sounds. Afterwards, I give them some practice material in the form of a test. So those tests and those, uh, I think, uh, MCQs and th that material, I will be going to share with you. You have to share with all your fellows with all your uh, uh, country fellows who are over there, your citizens over there. In this way, inshallah, they will improve their this issue. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, then we need to contact. Yes, uh, Mr. Ahmed Abdelal wants to contact with you, doctor, after the session. Yes, okay, Dr. Ahmed, you can contact me and I can give you uh, the WhatsApp uh, number for Dr. Muhammad and can, you can make contact between you and him, inshallah, after the session. Uh, yes, uh, Rania, Miss Rania, uh, if you mean about the recording, yes, uh, it is recorded and after uploading it on my YouTube, uh, then you can listen to the lecture another time. Okay. Uh, Ms. Shahida says, uh, very informative and we learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you, Ms. Rania. Yes. Now, Mr. Muhammad, another time. Go ahead, please, with your question. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, Dr. Sabdar Sab, you uh, said very rightly the we should focus on fluency first and then accuracy. Can you please give some advice? Of how can we be fluent in speaking English? Because if we try to speak the learned content in the written form, we are very fluent. But if we need to speak face to face or in the class, a bit hesitation and uh, very uh, uh, sound occurs between the pronunciation. Can you please give us some advice, please? Thank you. Thank you, dear, for your question. Actually, if you think that you have become fluent, then you should try to find an excellent teacher who is having a very sound knowledge of this pronunciation. You should get some help from him. Now the word has become a global village. Online teachings, online material, online resources are there. You can get the help from there because the main focus and the main problem is the fluency. Fluency first and accuracy comes automatically with the passage of time and with some uh, practice with a good, uh, I think, speaker of that language. So you should find out some uh, teacher from your area who may have good knowledge. You should get some practice with him. And inshallah, you will have a good command over that uh, fluency and the accuracy as well. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Mr. Muhammad and Dr. Muhammad. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. And there is another comment with Ms. Rania. Regarding this previous question of Ms. Asia, this applies also in Spanish with Arabic language where we have so much difficulties to teach Latin speak, uh, speakers some phonetic sounds of Arabic. Can I deal with it? It is similar since English, it is also a Latin based language. Yes. What question she is asking that they are having some different uh, alphabet and English is also having that some different alphabet. I think in my point of view, you uh, if you are a teacher, then you should uh, try to translate English uh, alphabet or English letters uh, in your own, uh, I think, mother tongue. You should get the help of L1 to teach them 
but not all the time they should reflect their mother tongue in their pronunciation like if i am teaching in pakistan i always write the letter and its uh, uh, transcription its notation after that i write down the word going to represent that particular sound and the word and the letter afterwards i write that in urdu so it becomes very easy for my students to pronounce it one two three or after some times or uh, they make some sort of the practice and after that they get very good command over their pronunciation they they are can you imagine they say that uh, sir we are uh, normally i ask them to whatever they are going to speak they should try to record it after the recording they should share it with their friends they should listen and they should give their feedback in this way uh, you can teach your students this pronunciation and the, you can tackle this issue thank you yes thank you thank you very much you're welcome Yes, uh, as you said, Dr. Muhammad, always drilling is very important. And when we record ourselves, it, it is very helpful for our kids, for example, to record themselves while speaking and to listen to some native speakers and to compare their pronunciation with the speaker's pronunciation. And they can repeat many times. In this way, I think uh, it will help. It would. It will help them in, uh, uh, for example, up upgrading and improving their pronunciation very much. Yes, ma'am. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I will see if there is any question. Yes, Miss Asia uh, says, I'm sorry, I'm not able to access this form. Miss Asia, I said to you, copy the link for the certification and uh, paste it in another browser. For example, if you are using Google, go to Edge or to Firefox or to any other browser, then you can fill the form and have your certification. Yes. Thank you. So there is no other question. So let's stop till here. Thanks another time, Dr. Muhammad, for this fruitful presentation. Thanks for accepting our invitation at the same time. And thanks all our guests from all over the world. And hope you to join us next Sunday, inshallah, in a new with a new guest uh, who is Ms. Wafa Madhu for the next for the second time and hope you will get benefit another time from our sessions inshallah but in Ramadan we will stop uh, which will begin uh, on the first uh, maybe of, of April for a whole month because Ramadan as you know us as uh, Muslims is anniversary and we will stop um, uh, accepting or inviting guests in this holy uh, month, inshallah. And we will return after Eid al-Fitr, inshallah, with our fruitful sessions. Uh, keep in touch and hope you enjoy this session and have nice dreams. Thank you another time and good night. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Thanks a lot. So nice of you, ma'am. It was a very great honor for me to interact with such a nice uh, people globally. And uh, whatever I was going, uh, I was having, I have tried my level best to share the best of mine, to give the best of mine. So thank you thank very you. much for listening to me. And so nice of you. Allah Hafiz and thank you. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you.